Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When fat cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re up Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm baby man Just caught a touchdown From the base Everything is real on this thing. And the streets are out. Like my mom told me I'm gonna get indicted for this shit. It's real. They gave like me 21. I said, uh, I said, well, goddamn, right? They gave me more time than I was actually looking. But I'm talking about, whoa, whoa, whoa. And when I was 17. You was really moving it. Let them know that. Yeah, I did, man. I let them know, know that. I had that. Let them know what you went down for. I used to bag them a whole thing. It's something that dies. It's all about the fucking dope money. It's all about the fucking dope money. It's all about the fucking dope money. Nigga, talk about Wait, Wait, Who. You wait right there while I saw these dogs. I was breathing. Nigga, y'all jokes aside, though. I got more time than I actually had on Earth. I ain't seen no mail home. Nigga, I looked the judge in my eyes. I heard my mom. I'm crying in the background. I said, somebody calm her down. They were smoking coke in my trial and everything. I said, somebody, I'm on I-95 in the van with dope. My they bone phone jumped like Earl Man the Goat. Listen, I you said somebody calm my mom like down. This, I love you, mom. Hey, yo, homegirl. Don't even make no sense. Don't even come and see me. I'm doing this the way I do it. And then did, and then did 10 and a half for 15 in a hole. I'm LeBron James. Straight, nigga. Ain't fuck wrong with niggas, man. Niggas talk that shit on me. How the fuck you gonna hate me? Let me motivate you, motherfucker. Let me show you how you should act when you face them years, nigga. You think they wouldn't try and give me the tail? They had me the tail, guys. Room. They said, they said, where you get it from? They woke me up again. They said, this nigga slobber. He ain't gonna say nothing. I fell asleep. I'm talking about when I'm in the when I'm in turn king. I got the best sleep of my life. That's the only time I sleep, motherfucker. Cause I don't got nothing to say. Niggas go to turn king. They be woke. Some niggas be woke. They be talking. They be facing the room. They be paranoid. I be knocked up. What good sleep this is? Like oh. this, what good sleep this is? I get back. I see you niggas when I get back. Six-year-old Jashawn Banner nearly lost his life when police say men on a kill mission missed their target in Wilmington, Delaware. Today, authorities say those suspects will face even more serious charges because of what reportedly happened that day. Shout out to her and I'm my nurse. Right. How many niggas you know that fucking nurse? on camera but i'm not going to expose her because i don't do that i don't do that shit. <laughs> but i'm a big screen boy but they see yeah, like, like, like all about man what's that big that screen? big screen all about <laughs> like the big screen shit is about like you living life like anytime i'm around in the city anywhere i ain't got to be in a fucking club the camera's always rolling delaware man has been sentenced to life in prison for his role in a deadly street feud involving a drug kingpin a federal court convicted Dion Oliver last November for the charges of kidnapping resulting in death. Prosecutors say in 2017, Oliver set out to kill one man, but instead kidnapped and killed the man's girlfriend. During the crime, a six-year-old boy was also shot with a stray bullet. The child has severe and permanent injuries. Well, we are following breaking news tonight. A man accused of attempted murder in Delaware was mistakenly released from custody after an appearance at a Newcastle County courthouse. Eyewitness News reporter David Spunt is live in Wilmington now with the latest. David. Natasha, attempted murder of a six-year-old boy in June of 2017 who is still suffering and fighting for his life almost a year and a half later. This man's name, Dion Oliver. We have a photograph of him, a mugshot. He was here this morning to make an appearance in court. He was held in custody. And what the Department of Corrections for the state of Delaware is saying is that he was erroneously let out of custody. We don't know exactly what that means. I asked multiple times how this 
this happen? Was there a problem with the paperwork, literally with the chain of custody? At this point, they're saying that's all under investigation. He escaped Natasha at 1045 this morning here at the Newcastle County Courthouse, was leaving seen actually just outside the courthouse wearing all black. But the good news, around 430 this afternoon, Dion Oliver, who also went by several aliases, turned himself in to the Wilmington Police Department. So he is now back in custody. Certainly, though, a lot of procedures are going to be under review because the big question, even though he's back in custody and people can breathe now, how did this happen? That's the big question. Reporting live in Wilmington, David Spunt, CBS 3 Eyewitness News. Certainly lots of questions. Thank Friday you so night at the big story on Action News, a Delaware shooting that changed a little boy's life forever. Today, federal investigators announced they are now taking over this case. Six men will now face a laundry list of charges, including attempted murder. Authorities say they tried to kill someone else, but ended up hitting a little boy riding in his family's car. Action News reporter Gray Hall joins us live in the studio with more on the story. Gray. Well, Rick and Monica, this is a crime that turned a family's life upside down. But tonight, authorities are hoping that the tougher charges will help ease some of the pain. This is our first look at all six suspects charged in the June 2017 shooting in Wilmington, Delaware, that critically injured kindergartner Deshaun Banner. The six-year-old was shot in the head while he sat in the car with his mother. Investigators say the suspects were shooting at someone else when Banner was caught in the crossfire. He was an innocent bystander in the wrong place at the wrong time. Because he is such a tough kid, and he has such a devoted family, he's doing better now than he was 20 months ago, uh, but his life will never be the same. Banner is now paralyzed and suffers from brain damage. The U.S. Attorney's Office says all state charges have been dropped in this case, but the group now faces stiffer federal criminal charges, including stalking, kidnapping, and crimes that led to the death of a woman involved in the violent feud. My heart goes out to the victims in this particular case, and, and we feel for the family and we feel for them and what they're going through. Um, this case is all about justice for the victims. Investigators say the arrest and charges for these six men is part of a larger effort to reduce violent crimes and make communities safer in Delaware. It's a move that law enforcement says is working. Crime throughout the city of Wilmington is down in virtually every key violent crime metric. Shootings are down 60%. Shooting homicides are down 44%. Rape is down 75%. Authorities say the stronger criminal charges and the arrest of this group should send a message to other violent offenders. When we see this type of violence being directed at individuals in our community, we as the FBI will come together and do all we can to collaborate with our state, local, federal partners to, to do what is necessary to make sure these people are brought to justice. And tonight, we can tell you that all six men are now facing the possibility of decades in prison. And authorities say at least five of them are facing life behind bars and the possibility of death. Now, you know why the mob don't condone violence? These niggas had a thriving drug operation and kind of crashed out beefing with a nigga over snitch allegations. Salute the almighty mob. Shit is popular. We back in Delaware on mob business. Now, during the trial proceedings in this case, prosecutors will go on to say that this group will coin the name Big Screening with the term meaning to get their enemies or their ops, significant others in compromising positions, recording those acts and then uploading it for the entire world to see. And based on my research, it will be one of those sessions that would lead to the kidnapping and death of a 20 something year old female, the critical shooting of a six year old boy and multiple attempts on a man's life all in one day. Now, the person that we're gonna be covering today is gonna be a one time up and coming Delaware rapper by the name of Ryan Buck 50 Bacon. But in order to cover the story of Ryan Bacon or Buck 50, who had a life filled with traumatic events, you will have to tell a story of the collective that he looked to be the head of, which was the Big Screen Boys. 
The other members being Rashid and Dwayne White, Maurice Cooper, Michael Pritchard, Dante Sykes, Tyrese Tennant, and the person that we seen in the footage earlier, Dion Oliver. Now, I'm not 100% sure of what led to the feud that would end up with a $10,000 bounty on Buck 50's head, as well as another $50,000 bounty placed on the head of Markavius Young Money Stanford. But it will be one of those big screening sessions that I spoke of earlier with the girlfriend of Markavius Stanford, a woman by the name of Keona Perkins, that will result in her death the critical shooting of six-year-old Jayshon Browner, as well as the multiple attempts on Young Money's life on that day in early June of 2017. Now, Buck 50, who a lot of people would say was one of the top faces on the music scene in Delaware, and in some of his recordings, he would go on to take shots at Young Money, alleging him to be a snitch, and I try to narrow it down to what it was that he allegedly snitched on. And I did see some kind of media coverage to where they said that a jail call he had received on the day that his girlfriend was murdered and those attempts was made on his life. And he possibly revealed the identity of one of the shooters. But a lot of those diss songs happened prior to that shooting. So... It's really no telling, as they said that Young Money was apparently cool with the members of the Big Screen Boys, so only they could speak to what was apparently behind that fallout. But it would be another situation that would escalate it besides the big screening of Young Money's girlfriend. And that would be the robbery of Michael Pritchard and Tyrese Tennant, who were members of the Big Screen Boys, but they were also said to be members of another elite group titled the four horsemen which included Dwayne white and rasheed white which to me looking at all the indictments they seemed like the drug hierarchy of the gang as they was charged with a lot of the drug crimes well not terry's tenant or Versace t let's just say he got a sweetheart deal but the robbery of the two men on may 10th 2017 on the wilmington street would escalate the feud and force the big screen boys to increase the bounty that they had on the head of Young Money, almost doubling it to $50,000. And that would lead to the fatal morning of June 6, 2017, when it would finally become deadly because it would be at that time when several members of the big screen boys will plot outside of the house of Keona Perkins, who was the girlfriend of Markavia Stanford or Young Money. Now, in the hopes of possibly seeing him coming out of the apartment or driving a the car, they would sit on the residence. But when he was nowhere to be found, they would go on to snatch Keona Perkins using her cell phone as a ploy contacting Young Money, trying to get him to reveal his location or possibly get him to meet them at a specific location. And the plot seemed to be somewhat successful because they would somehow bump into Markavia Stanford where they would take the first attempt on his life that day, opening fire on him. Luckily for young money, none of the bullets would strike him and he was able to flee the scene. But not so lucky was his girlfriend, Keona Perkins, who by that time had been stuffed in the trunk and I'm figuring the group didn't deem useful anymore. And it was at that time where two members of the group would take her to nearby Elkton, Maryland, to a wooded area where they would proceed to execute her. Now, it would be right around this time. Well, probably a little bit before this, where most people would be like, okay, this shit is out of hand. Maybe we should abort mission. But... In true going to war fashion, the group would continue to hunt for young money and they would eventually find him that very same day, not long after he would leave some kind of meeting with his probation officer, where just like they had done not too long earlier in the day, they would open fire on him again. Only this time, the bullets that was meant for him would hit six-year-old Jashawn Browner who was traveling in a vehicle with some of his family members. 
Now, the six-year-old who was said to have died three times that day, but was resuscitated each time, is alive today, but suffers through critical injuries from that shooting. And it would be that day and really that shooting that would mark the end of the big screen boys because it wouldn't be long after that before they would be indicted the very next year in 2018 with a whopping drug conspiracy where it's like the feds almost got on their line due to the violence. So in part of the case, one of the members of the Four Horsemen and the Big Screen Boys, Dwayne White, was said to have reached out to the family of the six-year-old, offering them $20,000 for them not to identify the person that was responsible for the shooting of their relative. Now, the family would go on to report that to authorities, and they would pretty much use that as evidence to convict the group. And with Wilmington being as dangerous of a city as it is, and what I'm saying, I'm talking about top 15 ranked nationally, I'm surprised a lot more people didn't lose their lives over this beef. Now, y'all make sure y'all hit the red bell and subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. Y'all get in the comment box, y'all run it up. Let me know what cities I need to go to, what stories I need to tell, what I got wrong, what gangsters I need to cover, what I missed. Y'all tap in with me directly, Instagram, Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. And until the next time, y'all know the verdict. Shit got popular. Salute the almighty mob.